Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. Now this is a very interesting kind of paper. It really piqued my interest. So I bought some from Lick, Dick Lick. It's called Evil Lawn. And it is actually microfiber. Uh, according to the manufacturer's description, it says Evalon can be used like canvas. It doesn't need to be primed since linseed oil won't hurt it. And there are no layers to worry about. It's foolproof for stretching and never sags. Um, it says here, it dampens instantly, but with some inks, ink prints well. Also, well, I think the uh, grammar here is wrong. It dampens instantly. And it's good for intaglio, litho, letterpress, monoprint. It can blot up to five times its weight in water. Perfect for dampening Japanese papers. So uh, it goes on and on and on about the good uh, aspects of this paper. Um, so the funny thing is, I don't know if you can technically call this paper. It is pure polyester nylon. It's archival quality and it is a non-woven split microfiber sheet. So I thought I would give it a try. Now a package of 15 sheets was something like $14. So it's about less than a dollar a sheet. So I thought I'd give it a try. Um, it looks and feels like fabric almost like rice paper, but since it's polyester, it, it doesn't tear. So I think it's going to be fascinating to try. And then there is a smoother side and there's a rough side. Now for monoprint, I'm going to try the smooth side. And today I am using my smallest plate. This is six inch by six inch. So there will be about an inch and a quarter on either side when I do the printing. And I got together my reusable stencils. I picked the smallest ones and I thought I'd have some fun today. So sit tight and let's check this out. Okay, let's start rolling. This is Blickrylic Mars Black. I'm going to start with the darkest colors and work my way up the scale. This is phthalo green. Again, I will be using my very, very small brayer. So I have two zones of color. Thank you. 
Okay, this should be interesting. Now since the paper is soft, I have to handle it very carefully because I could easily drop it. It's kind of like doing a woodcut because a woodcut paper is very thin and you can actually see the image through the back which is an advantage in a way. Now since this is highly absorbent I will not have to leave this Wow, check this out. I like that. How cool is that? I wasn't expecting this. It's very clear and there's no blotting. And you can clearly see the mark of the brayer. It's kind of like uh, the grains of wood. I'm very happy with the result. It's a pleasant surprise. I wasn't having too many high expectations. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Now I'm going to keep my theme of black and green because I'm going to start with the darker colors and then uh, add the brighter colors later. You will see in a minute. Now since it is very, very absorbent, I don't even need to press that hard. In fact, I'm, I'm hardly putting any pressure on the, on the paper. Just very gently pushing it down, very gently. Check this out. I think that is so cool. It's not just the mark of the scribble stick. It's also the texture of the brayer, which is very subtle. switching sides.
Okay, here's a change of pace. I will clean this up. and start using my stencils. Now I just have to put a piece of paper here because this printing bed is made of acrylic and there's a glare from the lights. So to avoid the glare on the camera, I just put this piece of paper to cover. Okay, so let's see here. Now, I haven't used stencils in a while, so Should be interesting. Okay, let me think about what to use for the second layer. I think I will use copper. This is Liquitex Basics copper.
nearly forgot this one. There. Now here is where the registration plays a role. It really feels like cotton fabric. lot. Very cool. Let me see if I can still pick this up. I have to be careful because the, uh, the green and black paint is still wet because it's soaked into the uh, paper. It really behaves more like a fabric than anything. Okay, this time I will combine some cadmium red and copper.
have an idea. This might be better. So I can apply slight pressure without making a mess. I should have done this the other time. I didn't think of it. I think I have to use something that is very opaque and very bright. Let me see what happens with this Venetian rose. This Venetian rose is quite opaque, so this might make a good last layer. Just making sure my fingers are clean. I'm 
going very easy and not even pressing. Now since this is a second pass, I'm pressing a little more, but not too much. Okay, I'm back. Now I will be honest with you, I'm a little underwhelmed by this. I think it still needs some color uh, because the pink layer is not as bright as I hoped it would be. So I will add some, this is vermilion. And I will, I have to think in reverse here. Let's see how this works out.
think that's a little more interesting. This piece I also find a little dull, so I'm going to see if I can liven this up. some magenta, see what happens. Okay, everybody, here we are at the next step. I am going to apply some collage on this. And I have some of the sketch pad where I offloaded my brayer. And I think these will
Again, I am using my Mod Podge mat. Okay, that's it for the first piece. Piece number two.
Now that's it for the third piece. So I will air dry all three of them and recap. Okay, I, I'm i going to be honest, I am a little underwhelmed by the results. Now I think, if I'm not mistaken, this uh, microfiber paper is more effective for single pulls, not for layers. So I am going to try to do uh, a composition here and I will do a single pull and that would be like a true monoprint. So I will have some black here. Oops, that's way too much. Sometimes the paint can be pretty unpredictable. So I have to be ready for these mishaps.
Let me just to show you how absorbent the paper is. It's bleeding to the other side, so I have to use this shield paper so I can apply a little pressure without making a mess. Okay, let's see how we did here. I like this much better. See, it's a clearer image. It's more uh, graphically strong. And so this paper, in my opinion, is not good for layers, but it's good for single pulls like this, where you, you take advantage of the absorbent nature of the paper. It's really like fabric. So I will air dry all four of these and make a comparison. Now here is the screw up. I'm going to show you how to remedy this in a little bit, but let me show you the other pieces first. This piece number two. Now I, I do like this a lot. I like these details. The uh, texture of the brayer. So that is piece number two. Here's the third piece. Again, I think what makes the print interesting is the very subtle textures, like this green area here. Let me show you this last one, which is my favorite. This is done in one pull. And I think it's the most effective one. And here are the details. See the details are very clear. Oh, it's a little hard to hold because it's very soft. But I think this is the most effective print. It's done in one shot and the details are very clear and concise and that's what I like. So anyway, uh, let me show you how to remedy the smear. Since this is microfiber, that stain is really in there. There's no way to scrape it off. 
So I have to do this. And I have here a piece of cold press. So I will just mount it on the cold press watercolor paper. Problem solved. It's interesting, this, uh, it almost has a magnetic charge. I think it's positively charged. And I think that's why microfiber is so good at being a cleaning rag, because the electrical charge attracts uh, dust and dirt and hairs, etc. So, when I place this on the watercolor paper, it, it grabs it. It's almost that, like I don't even need to glue it. But I, I will put glue. I will mount this uh, with glue, with uh, Mod Podge. But I'm just showing you the, the uh, peculiar properties of microfiber. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Please check out artwhisperer88.com. If you'd like to try this strange paper, I'll put a link in the description box below. And I hope to see you next time.